Okay, so that's the green work all done and on. So what we're gonna do now is gonna lighten up the green and just give it a little bit of a patchy look. Now to start with, you might be thinking, use a little bit of white, use whatever colors you've got. Okay, nope, we're gonna go in with yellow. The reason for it is, it's one of the colors that makes up green, so it will color change it, okay? But it won't physically change it from being a green. It's not gonna turn it into a gray green, if you like. It will just give you a different shade of green, okay? So that way we just pop that down into our fix like this. And again, there's no right or wrong to how much goes in or how little and all the rest of it. It is literally what it is, all right? And what we're gonna do is just model up what we've got. Now the reason for mottling it up a little bit is just to stop it looking like a brick. As you can see, it looks very plain and just green. So by doing what we're gonna do, it'll just give it that better look to it, okay? So we've still got a little bit in there, so we're just gonna blow that through. So we get our new colour. Okay, so then we're just going to pop our new colour in here. Okay, and then we're going to give it a couple of drops of thinner. Just so it's not too thick. We don't want it to be too thick and actually painting as it goes. We want it to act like a, a filter going on or a wash or something else like that. So that's in there just like that. And then we're just happy with the flow coming through. It's a nice thin mix. Okay, and then what we're going to do is just going to start off I'm just going to do middles of panels to start with and we're just going to slightly break things up, okay. Okay, so that's just the, the beginning part of it, okay, so it just sort of slight, slightly colour shifts it, okay. And then what we can do is we'll do the other side, the other areas, and then we'll just come in and be a lot more sort of precise okay so for the minute this is just going around the centers of the panels all like this and then again in a moment what we've done there now we're going to come in and just be a lot more sort of mottly as we make our way around with it and everything else like that it's a little bit tricky here for me to do and you to see at the same time Okay, so we're just going to up our air pressure just a little bit. So now we're just putting in little shapes, little Tetris type things as I call it. Some things getting a little bit more heavy. Okay, and all we're just trying to do is just lightly change the colour, okay? And this is the thing, the more you go over it, the stronger this will get. So for the first couple of passes, nothing's really going to happen. But then once we've gone in there a lot, so let's see what we're doing here with the glare. Okay. But hopefully you start to see the difference in the wing if we get rid of the glare. You can see those sort of shades and colours coming through. Okay, so just, I call it Tetris shapes, but little, you know, C shapes, little L shapes, little T's. Okay, it just sort of breaks it all up a little bit. Okay, just a little bit down the back here. Okay, so that's our sort of first pass with it all, literally like that. We've still got plenty in here. Then what we're going to do is going to add a little bit more yellow just into the mix. Okay, and then we'll switch over and we're going to go back in with buff. Okay, so all we're going to do is we're just going to pick a little bit of yellow on the brush, something like this, and then we're just going to pop it into the colour cup, give it a whiz around, and this will be a really light green colour now. Okay, so this is going to have to be quite sparing. We don't want to go over the top with it. Okay. So we just blow this through. And you can see, totally different colour now. Okay, so that's the, the sort of differences with it. And then what we're going to do, we're going to be quite sparing with this. Okay, 
I'm not going to go absolutely everywhere with this guy. This particular colour is more of a, you know, for those sort of little worn areas and things like that. Just trying to go in here just to break this down just a little bit. Okay, and you get the, the effect how it's starting to break it down just a little bit. And then what we're gonna do, we just pop over this one. Because actually what we'll do is we're going to post put on this some various colours and, and darker colours but the darker ones we'll come in with we're actually going to put those in afterwards. Okay, because we can go right over all the panels of that and that's what's going to blend us all together. Okay, don't forget these leading edge slats. Okay, so it's nicely just breaking it all up, changing the colours just a little bit with every single pass. Okay, and then like always I'm going to up the air pressure Okay, we're just going to dust. This is just to help to blend. Okay, it just makes it all sit quite nicely. And again, it's not going to change anything in one pass. What we're trying to do is just to... And also it'll make that difference in shading pop out a little bit more. Okay, then if you do see an area, perhaps you want to just add to or a little bit you forgot you can just pop in now like on those ailerons okay and then with future type areas you'll okay. you can really start to make a difference with it all okay and get it all to blend through like that okay and remember if it's too strong go back over it with the original color and you can knock it back but what we're trying to do is just break all this up a little bit and you can see we're hardly using any paint whatsoever so what we've got to do now to be honest i haven't done them is do the little flaps uh, out the back we've got to do those we've got to get those painted up so i'm going to get those done and we'll weather them in accordingly as we've done on this one Okay, so green coat has gone on, looking really nice. No problem with that at all. Okay, we did a little bit of post shading, said lightening it up, darkening it, things like that. But the major one we'll do with the black, we'll come back in because we can do everything with it. Now, stage one, getting the wings done, no problem at all. Stage two is gonna be the fuselage. Now, as we know, the wings were painted completely separately to the fuselage, so you can put a hard edge camo line using a little bit of tape just down onto the actual wings like this and making sure they're put down nice and firmly okay and we've done the tail planes as well and then what we can actually do is the main body of the aircraft so for this we're sticking with AK right the way through this one so we're going to be using RLM 76 which is uh, AK 2009 color uh, and everything else usual thing it's got some nuts floating around in there literally just to break up that pigment because it does separate just like the others and gets that blue tinge on the top okay so this isn't anything flash anything at all it is literally as simple as putting down a paint coat right over this thing okay so from that point of view you don't have to worry about mottlings and various colors and all those things it's simple as putting this down we don't have to worry about any colors or anything else like that for the moment because this is all going to be about the mottling effect we're going to do what we do have to do though is cover this green so i might need a couple of coats down there now this paint as i said i'm not a massive fan of it okay but it does do the job it doesn't do it very nicely and, and if i have my option and we it was like my call on the paint i'd be using something like an mrp or quite frankly anybody else's because this stuff 
although it, it's fully capable of the job, it just is very hard work, okay? So what we're gonna do is just putting down a nice coat, but we want it to be somewhat a little bit textured. We want it to be a little bit rough. The reason for that is what we're trying to achieve here is actually gonna give it some, obviously the mottling effect, but we want the weathering really to etch into it. So by giving this a little bit of a, a flat coat almost to this, a little bit of texture certainly uh, will help with the further weathering. So to achieve that, what we've got, this is quite a high air pressure, which to be honest, isn't too suited to this particular paint, it prefers a low air pressure, but we want it to really come through. So this blue is obviously just phase one of this, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come through with other shades and other things, okay, and lighten it up and everything, just like we've done the other effects. So quite a heavy coat just down on there like that, okay. And obviously don't grab the entire front of the model because otherwise you're going to do what I almost did there put my hand in it okay so we're just going to come back to the back end now obviously the bottom is going to be black and we're going to do various things but high air pressure gives you that sort of textured effect to it so again we don't want to make it too wet either we don't want to make it quite dry because if you make it too wet what's going to happen is uh, the paint's going to get really glossy so again keep it quite high air pressure so it dries And again, don't make it too neat. I know it sounds a bit of a cliche to all of this because it gives you a good excuse for when things go wrong, but honestly, we want it to be quite textured and a little bit gnarly. Now it's starting to spit there, and I don't know if you can see it on the end of my airbrush down in here, we've got a little ball appeared. And what that is, is where it's got a little bit of spat and dried onto the end of the, the nib, and that will affect the spray pattern. Something we'll talk about highly in a moment and I've managed to put a fingerprint over here which we'll show you how to get rid of in a moment. Okay so what we're going to do we're just going to come up here and just finish off this side. Okay make sure that the rudder is all taken care of. Okay, a little bit more just around the front here and that'll probably do it to be honest. Okay now that wing there you've got a couple of options sand it out or if you take a little bit of airbrush cleaner okay just on a cotton swab so i need a little bit okay rub most of it off so rub it on the back of your hand and then very lightly just wipe away okay and then once that dries a little bit what we can actually do is just sand it off and we'll be good to go but that gets rid of the most of it and as it dries in, all you'll do is come in here with a sanding sponge and just lightly sand off. But this is gonna get a full sanding job. We can come back, cover it up and everything else like that. Okay, so it's not too much of a problem. All right. So what we're gonna do, let that dry off, have a look at it, and then we're gonna change the shade just a little bit. So what we're gonna do is probably put a little bit of a tint in it uh, to the color, a little bit darker, pop around some panel lines, things like that, just to give it some difference in the shades and the panels all over this one. When we're happy with that, then what we can do is actually unmask it or have a look. Then we're gonna put in the brown areas, we'll get those sorted into it and everything else. And then we're gonna put the model work onto this one before we do the black. The black will be the last thing to go on so we can flip this guy over, we can get it all totally masked up, and we can do the black work on it. So there we go, that's stage one though. We'll let that dry off, come back, change that blue, a little bit of work on there, and we're good to go. Okay, so uh, looking good, no problem with that at all. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a little bit of a tint to this. So what we're gonna do is just gonna reload in here and we are gonna do it direct in the color cut, purely for just for speed. Okay, so original color. Okay, then we're gonna come in with thinners. All right, so we're just gonna pop in here with a generous dollop of thinners, probably around about 30% of thinners added down into the mix. We've got to be a little bit careful with this guy because we don't want to cover it. Okay, so that's just down into here. Now, um, you know, you can go through various uh, colors to actually change it slightly, but what we're going to do is just going to add a tint. So I'm just going to grab, not that one, that's for sure. What do we want? Uh, a little bit of dark gray. Okay, so down here we've got some of the RLM 66 that we've used down for the cockpit and things like that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is gonna put in one, two, three, four, 
five tenths and you can see it buzzing away and doing its bit in there which is really nice okay so we'll start off with sort of five drops down in here and again what we're trying to do is just change the the color now by using uh, the actual uh, gray into this basically you're tinting the paint all right so from this point of view what we want to do is we're just going to pick out various random type areas that's not a good sign there we go so again it's going to be very thin okay so we can knock the air pressure right down now okay very very thin actually this is a nice thin mix okay so now it's thin what we can do is we can just run around the entire model and what we've done is because of the risk of overspraying that we have just put on a little bit of more tape just onto these guys just to hold these wing sections in okay so we're going to do we're just going to put a bit of tape there fold this guy over and a little bit of tape just under there and move this as well this is just to stop the overspray it's going a little bit further than ideally i would like okay so just pop that on there okay so the other thing as well you might notice we've actually installed the canopy on the top purely so we can paint all of this at the same time okay so what we're going to do we are literally just going to come in now and spray just panels okay so we're just going to individually pick out the panel okay so we're not going near the panel line okay we're just picking out individual panels just to change the color just a little bit so just think of things as a whole as you see it paint it okay a little bit of trouble working this paint okay so we're near here okay it's quite a large area so we're sort of just going to randomize the the color just a bit and you can see the blues coming through on this really quickly Okay, so what I'm going to do is just lock off my trigger so I've got a maximum pull on this. Okay, but hopefully you'll be able to see. So what we're going to do is now just working it down in each area. This panel. And we're just fading in. Just trying to make little random changes. Remember what we were saying about you sort of doing the vertical motions? Hopefully you can see it's starting to pull this all apart and everything else. So we're just going to come in around the back here. A bit up in the tail. There. Okay. There's canopy. Okay, a little dust over, just to break it up a little bit. Okay. Okay. So just a little bit. So it's not much of a change down on here, but it's just a little bit over here. Again, just dust over the top. Okay, just gonna have some little squiggles and patterns just over the top of the hearts. And then again, right the way through. It's literally just to break it all up just a little bit. Okay, so we're just gonna right the way over. So when we get the modeling going on and stuff like that, everything's a little bit subdued because we don't want that original color being too bright underneath. We just want it quite gnarly looking and everything like that, okay? So we just dry that down a little bit. Happy with how that is. 
Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to keep that colour, but what we're going to do now is unmask. Now the reason for unmasking is so we can actually get right in there with the last sort of post shade right over this one where we're going to come in with a dark colour. Okay, now these guys will hopefully stick back in. Okay, so I'm going to get this unmasked, we'll get everything cleaned up and ready, and what we're going to do is the final sort of post shade on this one. That's actually looking quite nice, all of that. Happy with that. Okay, so last bit, what we're going to do, a bit more of the RLN66 just into this one, and this is our post, or last post shade colour. So a few drops of this in there, quite a bit to be honest. See how that all bubbles in there? That's great, because that means it's really uh, working well. Okay, and again, we're going to mix these two together. Okay, so we've just got like an off slighter light shade. Plenty of thinners, because obviously don't forget this is an effect. Okay. Just in there like that. Must have been terribly clumsy today. Okay. Now, you've got two ways of spraying this down. You can either go high air pressure, minimal amount. Okay, that'll be very, very directional to what you're doing. Okay. Or the other way of doing it, of course, is to go low air pressure very very close okay um and then that way you know you get different types of effects with it so what we're going to do is we're just gonna my color cup is for this one might help a little bit just going to spill this everywhere okay just make sure that has got a hole in it, it has. okay that's that color coming through so what we're going to do sounds pretty good to me okay so what we're going to do is just very lightly pick out various areas. Okay, so again, this is supposed to be an effect. We're not trying to change the world with this. Okay, and in theory, a little bit of stopping and starting with this paint. Okay, maybe a little bit too thick still. So what I'm going to do is thin it even more. Okay. We really want this to be flowing nicely but thinly at the same time. So what we need is just grab a patch so we can see exactly what we've got coming through. Let's just blow out that old colour first. Get rid of some of this out of here. Clean this up. Clean up the nib as well, which is really important. Get all that sorted. Okay. Okay, so. You can hear it. It's flowing really well. It's like a minimum type of flow and everything else. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to pop very lightly around the entire model okay so to start with what we do we're starting the fuselage so we're just going to go and follow the panel lines okay and again like there really wet very too much paint everything went wrong that could do don't worry about it we're just going to dry it down okay we can sand that in we can blend that in we can do lots of things with it but that was just pulling on the trigger way too much. Okay, so then here, there we go. Again. Again, this paint is not particularly behaving itself very nicely at all. So what we're gonna do is up the air pressure now to really get it to atomize very nicely, okay? And again, don't forget, it's an after effect. We're just trying to cause shadowing on anything. Okay, so that includes framework. Not very nice paint coming out of this whatsoever starting to get slightly annoyed with it. So you're to that point where, look, it's playing up, it's sort of working, but it's not really behaving nicely. So what I'm more inclined to do is to dump this entire load of paint and start afresh, okay? Because it's not actually working as well as we wanted, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna dump everything we've got here completely. We're gonna clean out the airbrush, fully blow it all the way through, make sure we're happy of how it's going, and we're going to start again because it's running very stop-start, stop-start. It's not flowing in the correct way I want it to, so it's easier to say, right, okay, let's clean out the airbrush, give it a full clean out, and then we can see exactly what's going on with it, 
and then we can just start again with a fresh paint mix up because what that's giving me is just nothing but trouble okay so we're just going to blow all this out okay full clean and we'll make up a new batch right okay so clean out of the airbrush fully okay so what we're going to do now is we're just going to pop around and we're going to follow panel lines okay I mean you can hear we've got a nice airflow now nice low air pressure so what we're doing is just popping around with a gray and we're just popping in just bits of panel lines as you can see right over it just to darken down now these don't worry too much what we're going to do is we're going to fade these back okay just like we've been doing with all the others make sure we've got a good flow okay You might notice that's where we had that spot before. So if you wanted to, just to blend that through, just give it a little bit extra. Okay, so that's those on those wings. And what it is, it's just gonna add texture a little bit later on for when we're doing other things to this. Because obviously we will be sanding the paint and doing all those things you always see us do. Okay. So now we're just going to randomly put in some little squiggles and patterns to just to break up those wings. Okay. And again, it's just layers, layers of depth. You know, so we've got the light, we've got the dark, we've got a spot on here which we'll take care of afterwards. Okay, just like that. So that's those done. Now the body is drying off nicely. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just following panel lines. And again, it doesn't have to be anything massive. It's just literally all about adding. And then the, here we're going to have, you know, obviously people crew and stuff. So I'm just going to lightly fade just to make a darker area just around that entire zone, okay? And then again, just up here. Going to up the air pressure just a little bit, just around this area, okay? And then just doing some little flicking motions going upwards just so we get that look that three-dimensional roll okay just around those areas just around there and again these what we're going to do is fade this back again in a moment as well so don't worry about too much Then back in here for these panel lines. Just like that, Let's cross this edge. Okay. Little hatch area. Again, it's very, very thin paint, so just take your time. And then the usual thing, right the way over it, just to dust it down. Alright, and then all we're just trying to do is just put grime and dirt into this. Okay, some of these which have gone a little bit heavy, we'll show you about in a moment how to take care of that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to plenty on the back end, that riveting type work on the tails. Okay, down here on the rudder, and again, little squiggles and wiggles and everything else just to. Give it more depth. Okay. okay, happy with that. Right the way over the entire model now. Just to blend. Should we just run out of that point? That's not a problem. Okay, and that's it. So what we're going to do now, just whilst we've got it, now we've done that randomness of colours and everything else like that, we're coming back with the original neat straight in here. Okay, so this is neat paint onto this one, and then just a tiny drop, just literally. So this is really, really thick colour, 
and this is just going to fix any little problems you may have caused. So you can use it for the green as well. So we're just going to let this come through. Okay, it's through. Now from my point of view doing it, we're a little bit heavy just this zone here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to flip this right over it. Okay, just going to go in the centers of the panels again and anywhere which is a little bit too much. And this is what's going to give you that nice broken down Okay, look to everything. So anywhere that looks just a little bit heavy and again we're doing that upward flick and anywhere that looks a little bit too much. Okay, anything you're just not really happy with, just knock it back just a fraction. Dust coat over the top. Okay. And it's just layers, just layers and layers and layers. This side is actually really nice. I'm quite happy how this one turned out. So what we're going to do, I've got this little guy just down in here we want to fix. So I'm going to put a big blodge over that, this access door. Centres of these panels as we're running down. And then again, little flicks. Okay, just on this top, and this canopy. Okay, around this back end, little dots and squiggles. All we're trying to do is literally just break it all up, just trying to fade all this guy back. And again, you think we've got loads more to go on this. We've got obviously certainly huge amounts of painting and weathering and all these things. And this is that thing where you can't really go wrong with this either. You're just adding layers, layers upon layers upon layers, just to try and keep everything going so i don't know which is going to be the best camera angle for this but there we go we've got this type of effect now going down and in i know these lights above are a bit bright maybe on the side camera you can see it a little bit more subtly but what we'll do is when we do the mottling itself we're going to go over to the other side and take care of that now this guy here what you can do take your sanding sponge okay you want your old warm one and we're just very lightly going to sand this okay and we'll wet our finger I'm just going to rub, and then, as you see, it's fading in, because the thing is, it's actually on the paint, and then obviously we can just fade it down a little bit, a little bit of a rub, okay, so if you ever get these little wet spots, there we go, faded in, and I would leave that, absolutely leave it, looks absolutely fine as is, alright, so there we go, phase two, completed that's the center what we're going to do in a moment we're going to put the green sections just uh, sorry the brown sections just on these areas down on here which i do believe is rlm81 is it the brownie color just on these so we're going to mask these off we'll get those put in when we're happy with that what we're going to do is start to work on the mottling right the way over this guy get that one done and also we're going to be doing the two-tone mottling because if you do mottling why not eh so what you're going to be doing is the green and the brown spots all over this guy okay and then what we're going to do is then get that masked off completely Completely once we're happy and then we're going to come in do all the black work to it multiple changes of black work as well using blues in there and grays to actually do color shifting and tinting right the way over this one to make it as best as possible we can on the underside as well as the top side and then it'll be a case of seal it down and we'll get on with the weathering but so far so good what we can do clean out the airbrush let that dry off we'll move back over to the normal bay because that'd be easier to show you on film uh, exactly doing the mottling technique 